Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Dave, the CNC newbie. Uh, first of all, using a new tripod now, so I can kind of hands-free. Uh, so this this is going to be a really quick one. Uh, so I've just got some new metal to uh, to continue building the uh, the frame, which I'm really really happy about. Uh, but the state of it right now is I'm installing the anti backlash nuts. Uh, so the cool thing is, so CNC produced a handy little instruction, which is actually on the pouch that they come in, which is great. Uh, I had already installed the old um, uh, bearings on oh, no, there, bearings, but um, you know, gotta take them off. I'll, I'll follow the instructions on the video. But the great thing is that in their uh, in their kits for the anti backlash nuts, it actually comes with the 3D printed uh, brackets, which is good. Which means that if you were concerned about before, you may have stripped the uh, the nut capture part. Uh, don't have to worry about it because uh, got new ones here. So the way these are going to work. So I've just installed this one already. Uh, just install that on. Super easy. The instructions are, are dead simple to follow. And what ends up happening is because I couldn't find any instructions online, any easy instructions, but this will do. So this is the other part. That's the uh, in the bottom bit with the teeth on it and your spring. So the idea is that this will actually uh, insert on there and you can press it. Carefully you don't lose it because the spring will disappear on you. And when you thread your rod into it, you want to make sure that these teeth, the teeth are actually here, uh, they register with the, the teeth holes that are on there. I don't know if you can see that. There's teeth holes. Anyway, the idea is that they they register in together, and they they kind of lock with each other. So it it, it applies pressure on the on the lead screws, so you're not going to get any kind of wiggle, even though there's really not much wiggle with these lead screws. Anyway, to to put the next piece together, again, don't lose these. So the great thing is the instructions show you how it's all done, which is really great. You basically they have an exploder diagram. Right at the front. Now I know I'm off camera, but I need to move myself backwards so you get to see my my pretty face. Basically, there's a little arrow on the base. You can see that. Yep. And the, the nut goes through with the arrow. And then all you do is we. Screw it into place, and then we shove it on the bracket. So all of my pieces are in, all the uh, anti backlash nuts are uh, screwed in. Now I need to actually install them on the uh, the rods. Now there's no indication of which way the rods meant to go in, or which way the anti backlash nuts meant to go on. Whether it's at the side of the, of the motor or not, I don't know. As you know, I'm the CNC newbie. I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm just going to take a guess. Because instructions really don't help. But as I, as I need to put the uh, screw thread on there with the spring, I'm going to put it on first. I guess that's the way you do it. Now I've already installed the end as per instructions. So that goes on nicely. I don't know how far I'm meant to put it on, I'm going to guess about, about there. So remember, my machine is a bit bigger than the one that comes with the kit. The kit uses 400mm lead screws, I've got 500mm lead screws. I just wanted to build area a bit bigger. Now, I need to make sure that I screw it in, so the teeth are going to register with the plate. So the this seems awfully simple. Just kind of that's on there. I guess I need to. Okay, that's going to be interesting. How the hell do I get those to line up? Because if I just move the screw. They both move together. Hmm. 
You know what? I probably need to actually screw them on at the same time, or registered, already registered. Can you tell this is the first time I'm doing it? Okay, now make sure I don't lose any part. Okay, so now I've got the spring hanging off the end. Oh, that's what I'm trying not to do, because if I lose that spring, I'm toast. Aha! They are now jammed together. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. Beauty. So yeah, so that spring, from what I've been able to see on the internet, is that there's really nothing super clear on the internet about it, but the idea is that this, um, this spring is keeping these two pushed apart, uh, which means that there's no, no play there at all, yet it still spins freely, which is super cool. Because if I was to just stick this through just for a laugh, one of the old ones, I don't know if you can hear that. Basically, there's a tiny, it's really tiny. Like it's such, I was expecting um, there to be much more play and the anti-backlash nuts were much more important, but that's a tiny amount. But it does show that the other one, uh, the, the nuts, special anti-backlash nuts, do make a difference. It's fine. It's a bit off center, but that's okay. That'll line itself up once everything's in. But it's not wiggling. Super. So I'm going to uh, carry on the build and I'll probably see you guys once the build is done. Catch ya. So, frame's not finished yet. Uh, what I'm just finished right now is putting the gantries together. So all these new, these new metal pieces my mate made for me, everything fits like a glove. All the, all the mounts and all the brackets, super happy with that. Uh, the next step is before we start putting the rest of the frame together, is to put on the, um, the bracket for the spindle. Now the one that comes with it is this Ubut 3D printed one. And they've even got a little inserting case, depending on what size router you, you're using. I'm not using a router because I'm trying to make it smaller. I'm using that spindle. So I've designed that 3D printed this one. Now this is based off their one. A couple of small changes. First of all, it's smaller, so it fits my spindle really nice. Now my spindle's 52 millimeter diameter, so I made this hole 53 millimeters. So it means it's a small amount of pressure and it closes right down. Now, what I've done on the bottom is I've created this little lip. It kind of goes around the bottom and with three little grooves. I've basically made a bayonet fitting. I'm gonna show a bit more later, uh, hopefully if it all works. Um, but the idea is I wanna make a dust shoe that kind of clips on with a bayonet style. Um, so that should go well, hopefully, in the future. But I wanted to show you this before I put it all on, because it's a bit easier to show you the, uh, um, what it looks like. So yeah, the idea is that the, the dust shoes can have little teeth that'll come in, and I can just kind of turn it, and we're in a lock in place. Anyway, back to the build. Hey guys, so, we're done. Basically, that was really uneventful, um, which is great. Uh, Everything just went together so smoothly. This is such a really simple build. I was, I was thinking this would be the kind of build where you'd need to be, like have a couple of people, at least need a third pair of hands to put together. But uh, no, this, this went together really, really smoothly. Um, only, down, only thing that was a bit challenging was uh, getting the back of this, um, I don't know if you can see back there, but there's the, uh, that's where the motor is. Um, the step up for the, for the, uh, Y axis, the tolerance on the hole must have been really, really, really tight because it was a challenge to get through. But a little bit of sanding, a bit of uh, persuasion, and it got through. Uh, next step is to do the electronics. But uh, yeah, I wanted to give you a look of what it looks like first. Uh, so you'll notice the frame is different to the frame they designed. The one that uh, comes with the kit automatically is basically square. It's also a bit smaller, as we said before. Uh, this is 100 millimeters uh, wider and deeper than the uh, original. And the original one basically cuts off kind of right 
right about here. It's a little square and it comes straight up the front. But I decided that uh, having a square uh, could be improved upon. So by having a big angled front means that when you're standing up looking down at it, I can have a nice big front clear plastic uh, viewing angle which can be a big, big door to easily see it. Um, just angled at the back just to kind of make it a bit easier. But yeah, so everything's kind of tightened. Got a couple more, uh, well, not everything's tightened, sorry. Uh, you just got to do the final couple of tightening. Um, but yeah, everything's everything's great. I'm, I'm so happy. Anyway, that's it for this video. I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Catch ya.